Hey everyone, we got a fully loaded 14 inch MacBook Pro here with the Max chip and 64 gigabytes of RAM. We're gonna try out this rotor brush tool in After Effects Beta and see how awesome it is. All right, so let's open up After Effects Beta. Recently a client wanted me to green screen rotoscope about 15 different people that were shot remotely across the world. So I recreated a video of a file that they would send over to me and it's just them in front of a wall uh, saying their name and it's kind of like this faux interview, mobile, mobile interview. So let's, here I am. Also, this is uh, ProRes footage from the iPhone 13 and looks pretty dang good. Could use some color correction, but... So what you're gonna wanna do, let's just uh, get me all set up here. So what you're gonna wanna do to start up Rotor Brush 2 is you click on your layer, and then you click on this guy up here, this little Rotor Brush tool, and then you're just gonna draw around the subject you want. Not too bad, I see some problem areas right here and if you want to add some stuff in you just keep it green. If you want to subtract you would press option and you can see that it goes from green to red. So green is add, red is subtract. So we're going to keep it in green, get my shoulder in there. Oop. So this is a good, easy way to kind of zoom around and see what got picked up and what didn't. And I can see that there was a slight problem here. Let's just... Over on the side, you can fine tune the rotor brush. You can feather, mess with the chatter, which is, you know, kind of the weird chunky stuff. It smooths everything out a little bit. But I think this is looking just fine. So let's hop back over to our composition. We are in full resolution right now. And let's just press play and see how this does. So as you can see, it's going at about two, three frames per second, but rendering three frames concurrently. And I don't know about you guys, but this looks pretty great. So we finished up and I mean, it looks great. So let's stick a background in there, see how everything kind of looks. This is for people to be working at the office in their modern, modern office space, not at home where we all are. Currently. So now I'm hanging out in my office, my modern office. And we do have to render again. Let's see if we can play it at quarter, how much faster that works for us. Wow, look at that. I mean, that's half, going half speed, 12. It's rendering nine frames right now at a time. 10, 
Jeez. So that's pretty cool. And from there, you can also duplicate, do tons of other stuff with myself. Move me around. I got a twin now. And I got a triplet. Oh, wow. You got three in me now. That's not good. One's bad enough. Yes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Rotor brush too. Nice. So I also got some questions about how long it takes to export 4K on the Max out of After Effects. So let's just export this uh, little over 12 second clip. And we're just gonna send this to the render queue. And we will keep it in ProRes 422. Try and take advantage of these Max chips and their extra ProRes cores. Okay, here we go. All right, so we just finished up our export. Uh, it took about five minutes and 45 seconds. That was with three separate rotos rotoscopes going on. So let's just get rid of a couple. See if that helps it out. Bring it back to the original me. Render, do the same thing. Apple ProRes 422. And off we go. So we just finished our other export of just one rotoscope file going, and that one took three minutes and 43 seconds. So the more rotoscopes you add on, it looks like uh, you're gonna get another minute for each one. So let's try something else. Let's bring in some other 4K footage. Uh, I have some drone footage and then another clip from the Panasonic S1H. So we can get some pretty good detail, but impressive. This might be all we need soon, just our cell phone. Anywho, let's uh, quit this and we will start something new again and clear it, clean out the cache. My apologies for my other testing videos, I was not clearing out the cache. And that may have given these computers a little boost in speed, but you know what? They really don't need it. It's pretty evident how fast these things are once you start using them. I highly recommend it. If you're doing After Effects stuff, you're doing video editing, this Max machine is crazy. I've never edited on something this fast before. I've been using Macintoshes my whole life. This is the fastest I've ever seen them go. So I'm looking to the future. This is good. If we're going this fast in another 10 years, it's gonna be like you hit export and it'll just be done. Uh, no more waiting ever. And maybe they'll just be reading our brain waves and that's how you'll do all your edits from now on. So let's start up a new composition. All right, we got a new composition here. Let's keep it in 4K. I know this drone footage is in 4K and so is... All right, so this is a 4K clip from the Panasonic S1H 
used it in a, one of my other videos, but we're just gonna try and do another little simple rotoscope around here. What's it saying already? That easy. And once again, I'm gonna, if you want to refine and do lots of other stuff, you can. Uh, I don't really, I'm not really too into this. I like these quick and dirty rotoscoping missions. Rotor brush initializing Sensei. So Adobe Sensei is the AI system that is powering the rotor brush and a bunch of other things and so what they've done is they've fed probably millions of images into the, the Adobe Sensei uh, program and they've been trying to teach Sensei to see. So when, you know, they feed in thousands of different car photos and so Sensei is like, okay, this is a car, this is a car. And then when you drop in your car footage, it's like, hey, I've seen that, it's a car and I know that it's got mirrors that stick out of the side and I know what's coming up next and that's why it's just like so good uh, and these machines are getting really crazy so so let's just see how fast this plays now it had some time to preview and get a little render going and now we're seeing it's gotta slow down a little bit but man it is going fast so let's just drop this down to a quarter. See how well that helps helps out. It's playing fast enough where you can see problems. Oh wow, look at that. Something opening up. So you would go back and fine tune this footage and do a couple little marks and stuff like that, but it, it has really done a really good job cutting me out already. There we go. Now it's in real time. Put my AirPods on as I fly up into the sky. So there we go, this is two, two separate 4K clips. One is rotoscoped, the background is not. So, we'll keep it in Apple ProRes 422. And just take that to the desktop, yes. Off we go. All right, so that took two minutes and 37 seconds to export in ProRes 422. Not bad at all, not bad at all. So I'm definitely enjoying this rotoscoping tool. Uh, having Just having this speed and power, being able to use After Effects, seeing what you're doing, seeing what you're changing right away instead of moving a parameter, waiting a few seconds for it to catch up so you can see what you've done. You don't have to do any of that. It's all playing practically in real time or it's at least choppy enough to where you can see what is going on. So, awesome stuff. Really looking forward to a solid release for After Effects. So it's just a great win-win situation for us finally. You know, we can tap in to the speed and the power. Everyone's connecting the dots now. They're using AI. They're using the actual power of the computer to help do the work for us. One glorious day we'll all get the email that uh, the real thing is ready to download, but they're like right on the verge. I and mean, this is great. Thank you everyone for watching. Please hit that subscribe button down below and I'll see you at the next one. Take care.